I thank you so much for watching tonight. Uh, we are studying Daniel chapter 5, verses 13 through 31. Last time we studied the first part of chapter 5, so I encourage you to go back and listen to that video on YouTube because we don't have time to go over all that important information. But Belshazzar threw his huge party using the vessels from the temple in Jerusalem to get drunk with. As they were partying and laughing, holding their uh, vessels with their hands, dishonoring Yahweh, desecrating his holy vessels, Yahweh used that hand uh, in order to, to cause shaking. When they saw his hand writing on the wall, those hands holding those holy vessels began shaking and dropping those vessels to the ground. Their laughing and parting changed to fear and gloom. Belshazzar brought in his occultist to try to read the writing on the wall, and they could not. Why? Because it was in Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke when he was here. They don't know Aramaic. God has a great sense of humor. The queen, which was the head wife, came in and reminded Belshazzar about Daniel. And this is where we stopped last time. So the title of tonight's message is, The King Crashes the Party. <laughs> And that king, of course, is King Jesus, who crashes the party. So write this down. Last time we studied, King Jesus crashed the party, number one, after he was despised and his holy vessels were desecrated, verses one through four. And then number two is, King Jesus crashed the party by writing his message on the wall, verses five through 12. And tonight, we're looking at part two. And number three is, King Jesus crashed the party by explaining his message through Daniel. And that's verses 13 through 31. So we'll begin with verse 13 tonight. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who was one of the captives from Judah? So, see, he, he starts that way. You know, I've heard that a lot of people think you're special. Mm -hmm. My wife says that your God, who I don't believe in, uh, has told you special things. But I want you to remember who you are. You're a captive from Judah. You're my slave. And so he, he's, even though he's scared to death because of that hand on the wall, that writing on the wall and the hand that he saw, uh, he still has no honor for Daniel nor his God Yahweh. So he says, uh, are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? And remember, I want you to uh, remember what we studied last time. When, when you study history, you see that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was not the biological father of Belshazzar uh, historically and literally, but the word father, as we talked about last time, can be interpreted as uh, one of my ancestors, like we like we would say, Abraham is our father, because we come from that lineage of faith. Uh, we all come from Noah, so we all have some Jew Jewish uh, nationality and genealogy, and we all come from Adam and Eve. Uh, so Adam's our father, uh, Noah's our father, etc. Uh, verse fourteen. I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you. Now, now see, he, <laughs> he, he finally acknowledges that, uh, and, and notice what he's saying, I've heard this. He's not believing it, but he's saying, I heard this, that the Spirit of God is in you. That light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now, the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. And if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So, He's saying here the same thing he said to his occultist, that if you can interpret this, then uh, I will dress you in royal apparel 
and you'll be right under me as a leader in in my uh, kingdom of Babylon. But of course, that meant nothing to Daniel because the Lord revealed to Daniel, Babylon's about to fall and this king's about to die. Uh, so, verse 17, Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. Now see, that the reward of Yahweh was plenty for Daniel. That's all he needed. And, you know, the Bible says that if we are rewarded for things on earth, then we will not be rewarded in heaven. And that's why uh, the Lord says you should never boast about yourself or tell others what you've done. Uh, that's all the reward you're going to get. Because why? Your heart's not right. So Daniel's heart was usually right before God. He was one of those that lived for the Lord most of the time, a highly honored one. And that should be where we're all seeking to grow. Uh, verse 18, O king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. Whomever he wished, he put down. Verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up, in other words, when, when Nebuchadnezzar became proud and gave no glory to God at all, uh, he, he goes into that, explained to him uh, what happened in history because uh, this Belshazzar, uh, like many people today, are clueless about history and uh, the, the truth about history. When his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. He was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew the most high God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. So he, he's telling Belshazzar some history here that he became like an ox. Uh, he, it, mentally, he had that disorder, boanthropy, where he believed he was an ox for seven years until he looked up to God and said, I need you. Yahweh, you are the true God. I, 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 I repent. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Uh, I need you, my Lord. Verse 22. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. So the Lord, Yahweh, is telling Daniel right here, and, and he's very bold for saying this, and that's what I've been telling you, church. There are times we have to be bold. There are times we have to speak the truth in love, even if it makes people angry, uh, just like Jesus did. He's our, he's our model. He's our example. And he's speaking to the king here are these truths. And, it, you know, if the king decided to kill him, you know, he's fine with that. It's his time to go to heaven. He's looking forward to heaven. But he had to speak the truth. Jesus commands, speak the truth in love. Verse 22, But you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. So, so somebody had told Belshazzar these things, but he didn't take it seriously at all. Verse 23, and you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you. And you and your lords, your wives and concubines, have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see, hear, or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him. And this writing was written, and this is the inscription that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Absharan. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. 
So that's where I want to stop a moment and talk about these words. Again, these are words that are Aramaic. It's the language that Jesus spoke when he was on the earth. And no one in Babylon knew what that meant. That, that's just like me trying to read Chinese. There's no way. <laughs> uh, the Lord said that uh, he would have that interpreted by his own man, Daniel. And so uh, he interprets that. Now, the Aramaic word mene actually means numbered. That's what that one word means. And what it, the whole understanding of that word numbered means that Yahweh has numbered your days as king. He has numbered the days of your kingdom. So the Medo-Persian army was already at that moment attacking Babylon and would soon take over all of Babylon. The next, and, and that word mene is there twice. So, so that, that, whenever you see something like that in the Bible where a word or phrase is mentioned twice, it's extremely serious. So, so he's saying to them, numbered, numbered. And most Bible scholars believe that everybody in that room, the thousand plus leaders and their companions and concubines, all those people knew that they were being attacked by the Medo-Persian army, and, and they were just ignoring that. Uh, in, in counseling and in psychology, uh, we, we call that escaping. Uh, there, there are many different words for that when people just want to block the truth out and, and want to just ignore it like it's not happening. Uh, and so... Uh, that's what they were doing, and, and he's reminding them, you can't run from this. Numbered, numbered. Your moments, your lives are numbered, and, and it's about time for your life and your kingdom to be taken. Uh, tekel is the next word. The Aramaic word means weighed. Yahweh is saying, your life and actions have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. In other words, you don't measure up. You think you do, but you don't. And you don't weigh much at all. He thinks he's somebody special. Uh, he's a little ant that's about to be stepped on. Um, you know, the Lord weighs each person's actions, doesn't he? And he's always very uh, careful about reminding us of, of his will. And he'll speak through a Christian to do that. Uh, he will uh, speak through his word and by his spirit. But uh, we have to be seeking him in order for us to understand what he's trying to say to us. I want you to write down these verses because they go along with what we're looking at tonight. Uh, the first one is 1 Samuel 2, verse 3 which says, Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Now, if we look back, and this is one of my favorite verses, uh, Daniel 2.22, 2, 2, 2, 2. Uh, All the way through the Bible, there are great verses with those numbers, 2.2.2, 2, 2, 2, and this is one of them. And uh, this is what it says. The Lord reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. And that's awesome. See, God knows everything. Uh, he knew everything going on in Babylon. He knew everything that Belshazzar had done. And he let it go on, didn't he? You know, I'm sure Daniel... And Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were all wondering, God, why are you allowing this new king to do all these things? Why, why are you allowing them to dishonor you and despise you and use your holy vessels and desecrate them? And God is saying, just wait. Just wait. I have a plan. And, and I, you know my word. And see, when you mature in the Lord, you remember his word. And you remember it's true. 
And his word says, they will reap what they sown. <laughs> and I'm still on the throne. And I will have the victory. I will win this. He reveals the deep and secret things. See, that reminds me of the scripture that says, your sin will find you out. People, you know, Satan, that's Satan's one of, one of his greatest lies when he says, nobody's going to know. Go ahead. It, it's, it, nothing bad will happen if you do this. But, oh, yes, it will. Sin always has consequences, and your sin will find you out. And he warns us, repent while you still have time before your sin causes you some serious damage and those around you. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Do you dwell on the light? If you dwell on the light, you don't let darkness bother you. You don't let darkness pull you down. You don't let darkness influence you to do the things that those in the dark do. If there's anything you're doing in your life that you have to sneak around a corner or hide from others, that's totally Satan. And you have the choice to turn from that or to keep believing his lies and keep harming yourself and, and bring harm to those around you as well. How could you do that? Wise up. So the other scripture, write it down, Psalm 62, 9. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. <laughs> How about that? So that just shows that God is God. And we are just vapors. And either our vapors are going to stay in heaven with him because we love him and serve him and know him. Or your vapor will be burned up in hell. I hope you know Jesus tonight. Yahweh evaluates his people as a divine judge. Belshazzar and Babylon were found to be ripe for judgment. God always shows up in his perfect timing. You know, God is a loving God, but he's also just and must punish sin. The next word is Paris. Paris means, this, this Aramaic word means divided. Babylon was soon to be destroyed and taken over by the Medo-Persian Empire. So they were about to be divided. Yahweh was saying, you've grievously sinned against me and my people. You've remained defiant, refused to repent. It's too late. You're now terminated. So verse 28 says, uh, when he read, this is what Daniel said, Paris means your kingdom has been divided uh, and given to the Medes and Persians. Verse 29, then Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in all the kingdom. So the, the, even though Daniel said, no, I don't need all that, they, they, they insisted on it. He was like, oh, okay, whatever, <laughs> and let him do it. But, uh, you know, that he knew it didn't mean a thing because uh, they were about to be taken over by uh, the Medo-Persian Empire. Uh, look at verse 30. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So, there are a lot of people, liberal Bible, I don't even know what to call them, nutsos, <laughs> that want to say history doesn't line up with mm. this chapter. And they're wrong. Mm. If you read the conservative Bible scholars, everything lines up. And we're going to talk about that. Um, the Medo-Persian army uh, conquered Babylon and killed Belshazzar that very night. And uh, Darius was appointed by Cyrus, who was the founder and ruler of the Persian Empire, to rule over Babylon, now part of the Persian Empire. So uh, the, what we read about in Scripture, Darius, uh, they want to argue about Cyrus. No, Cyrus was the leader, but he appointed Darius to be ruler over Babylon. That, there's no argument there. There's no contradiction in the Word of God with history. 
Cyrus was also called Cyrus the Great, Cyrus the Elder, and Cyrus I of Persia. So I want to go over some application here as well. Uh, just like with Belshazzar, death often comes very suddenly. Ecclesiastes 9, 12. For a man also does not know his time. Like fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare, so the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. Very true words in Ecclesiastes written by King Solomon. Also from King Solomon, Proverbs 27, verse 1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Uh, Psalm 39, verse 4. Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. So live each day like that will be the last day you live on planet Earth. And live like you're going to have to stand before Jesus very soon to give an account. I think you, we would all get more serious about every day, wouldn't we? Uh, reaching out to people who need to be reached that God has placed in our lives. Showing people that we love how much we love them. Um, another application, don't be enticed by what the world has to offer. We see all those commercials all the time. Oh, you need this. you got to have this. Look, look what you're missing out on. Uh, the world offers you so much, and so many young people fall for all that, and, and they need instant gratification. i got to go through that drive through and get my junk food to satisfy my flesh. Uh, I've got to have that. I've got to order it online and get it tomorrow. You don't, are you following God? Are you seeking his will? So we need to all be very careful to follow the Lord and only seek the things that God wants to seek and do the things that God wants to do and the things that will glorify him. Write down 1 John 2, verses 16 and 17. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. Evidence that you're born again. You do the will of God. You have the power to say no to sin and yes to God Almighty. If you're one that just can't control your flesh, you ought to check out your salvation see if you're truly saved. Because Jesus Christ says, I will be in you, and I will help you be an overcomer. Mm -hmm. And when, you, when we do sin, we all will mess up. If you're born again, you have conviction of that, and you quickly repent of that, like Daniel did, like those who know God always do. And, and you come to Jesus, and you ask for him to help you to be that Christ-like example for others to follow. So... Belshazzar was enticed what the world had to offer. You know, uh, he, he went with the liberal thinking of, hey man, let's just party now because tomorrow we could die. That was the motto of Babylon. But was it the motto of God, was it? Oh, but Jesus drank with his disciples. He partied with his disciples. What's wrong with a drinking party? Seek God. Seek God with all your heart. And God will show you how to glorify him in all that you do. Don't be enticed what the world has to offer. Those sins can enslave you. And I've seen it over and over, whether it's alcohol, whether it's illegal drugs, whether whatever the sin is, we all, we all have sin. God can help you overcome that. God can help you to turn from that so that you can glorify him and actually live longer on this earth. Uh, write down Daniel 5, verse 29. I want to read that to you. Daniel 5, 29. We looked at that tonight. Um, where 
Belshazzar was clothed and honored by the king and, and given all that uh, supposed glory, but he, that didn't mean a thing to Daniel, did it? And what you need to understand is that those who are born again, those who know God like Daniel did, uh, they remain humble. Even though they tried to exalt him as a, you know, a great ruler and a great man, uh, it didn't mean anything to him. The humble are often exalted by others, but they remain humble. And then write down Luke twenty two twenty six. Jesus said, He who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. And remember, Jesus said the greatest on earth are those who serve others. Those who are great spiritual Servant leaders in heaven are those who served others on earth. And they didn't do what Belshazzar did. They didn't live like Belshazzar. They, they didn't just care about self and, and, and fulfill the, the lust of the flesh every day, all day. That leads to destruction, just like Belshazzar. But Daniel glorified the Lord. He was a godly leader. He remained humble. He did the will of the Lord. He served others. He lived to be that Christ-like example. And that's what God calls all of us to do. You know, I've lived long enough that I've heard many people say, I wish I had not been a bad example for my kids. Because why? Their kids died early. And they had to live with that. And none of us are perfect parents. But folks, we can always repent. We can always seek the power of God to be that, that leader that God wants us to be, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ Jesus. Say what I say. Do what I do. And when we mess up, we admit it. We confess it and say, will you pray for me that I won't mess up again? That's the will of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for speaking to our hearts tonight through your word and by your spirit. And Lord, uh, the, the phrase in America, I can read the writing on the wall, came from Daniel chapter 5 that we studied tonight. And Lord, we can read the writing on the wall for America. We can read the writing on the wall for people's lives that are not consecrated to you uh, and Lord we can read the writing on the wall for those who do honor you and glorify you like Daniel did they are rewarded they are blessed they they are uh, those who are highly favored by our God Lord Jesus thank you for giving us your power your spirit to live for you and God we just pray that if there's anyone listening tonight that is truly not born again, that they would receive you as Lord and Savior tonight. That's a very personal thing, a very private thing. And God, I pray that they would do that as soon as they, they finish listening to this video. And God, I pray that if there's someone tonight listening to this who does not love you as first love, they've been living for the flesh, they've been living a selfish life, I pray they would repent, that the prodigal would come home, and come back to the Father and say, Father, I'm sorry I've sinned against you. And Lord, I pray that, that you would just give them your power to overcome the sins that entangle them and enslave them. In Jesus' name. God, help us to live your word that we've heard tonight by the power of your spirit. And we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for listening. May God bless you.